and I've got a hair light up here that, well, I don't have any hair, but you get the idea. So without the hair light, what do we have? About seven or eight years ago, I decided that I wanted to start making my own short films. It wasn't a thing that I wanted to do for glamour, or glory, or money, or anything like that. I really just saw what other people were doing on YouTube and the like. I was impressed, and I wanted to do what they were doing. I enjoyed watching what they created, and I wanted to do some creative things myself. So, why the heck not? I went out, and I spent $250 on a brand new, cheapo camcorder, and I started filming. Little did I know that some guy was going to rain on my parade and tell me that cheap equipment didn't make me a better filmmaker and I had to spend money on expensive stuff if I wanted to be good. Say hello to three generations of my cameras. The Canon R60, the Panasonic G7, and the Panasonic GH5S. We don't need this one, I'm putting it away. The days of these old DV camcorders, they're long gone. Thank God. The tapes, terrible to capture horrible to deal with, horrible quality compared to what you get today even in the cheapest of cameras. So we're going to assume that you want to buy some remotely modern video equipment and make some films or some videos. Before I get into it, action cameras, they're great for what they're made for, very limited. You don't want to get an action camera for general purpose use, so no. Let me dispense the cheap filmmaking advice very quickly. Cheap camcorder, Canon R series, $100 on eBay. You can get an R20, R200 series, the R3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They're all basically the exact same camcorder. Don't worry about that. They've pretty much all got the same capabilities. That's an R60, an R20 would work just fine. It's really more important that you focus on everything that's not the camera before you worry too much about your camera itself. This is a film studio. It goes in front of the camera. It looks good because I made it look good. The stuff the camera picks up is really more important than the camera itself. Focus on your set design. This was my first filmmaking light. I still have it. It's a clamp light from Walmart. Eight bucks, but plenty of light. Aww. This microphone I'm using right now is a Tascam TM60. It's a battery powered microphone. It has a built in amplifier and it feeds into my camera. But you can use this with that R60 or with that GH5S or with this G7. Any powered microphone will do and that's all that matters. You can get a nice shotgun mic with a battery for 80 bucks or so, which is actually what I did when I started out. But you can also get one for cheaper than that. If you can get one for cheaper, do it. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 8 bucks. That's $158 worth of equipment. And you've got everything that you need. But Jody, I'm gonna do that thing that they did in your school where they pretended like if you wore Nike Air sneakers, that made you a better person. So you get a better camera, it makes you a better filmmaker. Look, Billy, I hear you, but you're wrong. And I'm gonna prove it to you right now. We're gonna do a comparison of these two cameras with bad lighting and really good lighting and cheapo clamp lighting. Be honest, you wanted to see my big cans. These are bigger clamp lights. I don't recommend these big clamp lights because they're way too heavy for the actual clamps. So you can't really clamp them on things very easily. But they do have these hangers. But if you get a few small clamps, you're covered. The clamp lights have these Y adapters. I actually took it out of this little one here. So let's see how things look if we have better lighting versus worse lighting with a really expensive camera versus a dirt cheap one. I put the Y adapter with the second bulb back in it. And now the set's lit entirely by clamp lights. To soften the clamp light that's right in front of me like these soft boxes, I took this piece of foam from a video card box and just plunked it down in front of it. If you need to do this, you can just tape a piece of paper over the clamp light. It doesn't even have to cover the whole thing. There's only about 60% of it. The main thing is that the lamps down here are not directly visible to me. So all of that light's being softened. The only major disadvantage of a clamp light is it doesn't come with these stands. So you don't have stands to put the lights on. Especially if I remove my glasses to get rid of the glare problem that I have due to not having a nice light stand with a huge softbox, this is a perfectly serviceable setup. I've got a hair light over there. I've got a key light right here. I don't have a light right there. I decided not to hook the other clamp up, mainly because I broke it. But you can see how well this works. Now, is the $150 softbox kit that I got off Amazon better? Well, 
yeah, obviously it's better, but is it that much better? Do I need it? No, this is perfectly fine. At this point, my money would be better spent on just getting a stand to put that clamp light on, or better yet, getting a light that's on a stand already. We all know the most expensive camera with the best lighting setup is absolutely going to win, but you tell me. And finally, let's look at how it is if we just don't spend any money on lights at all, buy a camera, and just make do with the stuff in the office. Before I change the settings on the camera, full disclosure, I did have to up the exposure on both of those cameras with the clamp lights, but not by very much. It was about one stop difference. Even with the compensation that I made for those smaller lamps, the office lights are bad. The white balance is out of whack, just all over the place. Let me correct it. Okay, I've tweaked up my cameras and it looks terrible. I'm looking at my field monitor here and I see that this part of my head is overexposed. You've got these very harsh shadows. My eyes are super dark. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. This, this whole side of my face is darker than the rest because the light's all coming from one upward place. So my shirt's overexposed here, but when you get up in the collar area, it gets worse. So, hmm. This is unacceptable lighting. This is the least professional way that you could possibly light anything. Overhead fluorescent lights are the worst. And for my final trick, I'm gonna show you how important lighting really is by taking my cell phone flashlight out and adding it to this picture. If we just have this light, and it doesn't even have to be on camera, it could be over here. So, without, with. You see the difference? Without, with, without, with. Look. The shadows are softer, my face doesn't look quite as bad. I mean, it's still bad, don't get me wrong, but it's nowhere near as bad. So, fill light, just a little fill light, is all it takes to make things less bad. So, random guy in the comments I'll never meet in real life, I hope now you can see clearly, you were wrong. This is what it looks like when I only have two of the three soft boxes on. It, it's just as bad, I mean, let's be honest. Oh, one more addition. I want to show you what happens when I change the lighting that I've already got. I've got two lights here that flood my face from two sides, and I've got a hair light up here that, well, I don't have any hair, but you get the idea. So without the hair light, what do we have? Okay, <laughs> that's starting to look a lot like the clamp light situation, isn't it? But check this out. Remember what we had earlier? So this is the same setup that I had the clamp lights in, and frankly, I think it looks worse than the clamp lights because this thing is at half power, and even if I turn the other bank on, it's still gonna cast harsh shadows in that direction. And then, well, now we have the same problem in the other direction. So, and if you only have one light, well, it's nice and moody if that's what you're going for, but for a professional presentation like this, you really need a three-point lighting setup. But, camera doesn't care if they're clamp lights or giant soft boxes as long as you set it up right. I hope this has been educational. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Have a good one.